going on, Jerome's another day, another NFL mock draft to take a look at. Charles Davis, great NFL analyst as well as announcer. Uh, he did up his mock draft 1.0. Th- there's a lot of int- intrigue going on. Of course, Charles Davis is extremely tied into the league. Uh, he you know, meet, meets every single team while he's calling games. He's got great contacts in the league. So it's very intriguing, uh, a couple of these picks. And we're starting to see... We're starting to see some steam. Maybe Trevon Walker uh, gets into that one spot for the Jaguars. Even though Aiden Hutchinson, I I think, right away is a finished product, I think Walker's ceiling potentially is higher uh, than Hutchinson. And, I mean, Walker's just going to be a dude, man. He is. Do the Jaguars want to bet on that? Do they want the bird in the hand versus two in the bush? Will they go two in the bush here with Trevon Walker at one? Lions, if this happens... Just run, sprint the card up to the podium. Like, don't waste our time. Don't take the full 10 minutes. Just take Hutchinson. Keep him in your backyard. Three, Texans, Thibodeau. Where, uh, so they could go a lot of different directions here. They could go offensive lineman. They could go Kyle Hamilton. They could even go cornerback here. But uh, Thibodeau, I understand the drawbacks. Some questions about his bend. But, you know, they do need a premier pass rusher uh, with the Texans. They need a lot of help everywhere. But whatever. Four. Jets with the first of two picks. Uh, Sticky Ike Kwanu, the physical freak offensive lineman, uh, coming in from NC State. Now, th- they already have uh, another fantastic offensive lineman in Mekhi Becton, but you know, Becton took a bit of a step back last season. So maybe put Becton at right tackle, maybe have Ike at left tackle, and you just have two people movers, just freaks uh, at the bookends. Five. Giants, first of two first-round picks. Evan Neal, yes, the real deal with Evan Neal. Could play him at right tackle. If you want to keep Andrew Thomas at left tackle, that's perfectly fine. And got some nice bookends for Daniel Jones. Uh, let's see here. The Giants' second pick, Jermaine Johnson. Ooh, both sides. Jermaine Johnson, Private Eden Prairie, working with uh, Andre Patterson. I-, I like that for them. I like that. Uh, six, the Panthers go with Malik Willis. Now, th- this is definitely I- – I understand that the quarterback class is a little bit – not great compared to other seasons, but I think Willis does have potential to be a stud in this league. Uh, and also, they're drafting to save jobs here because they're like, maybe, hey, we effed up on Sam Darnold big time, uh, but maybe Malik Willis can save us and, and he can be that dude. Uh, I, I think that Willis does beat out Darnold, uh, especially if they want to try and save their bacon. And you know, may, maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Uh, eight. Yeah, talk about seven, talk about eight. Uh, Garrett Wilson, G Dub with the Falcons, where. I think that if Malik Willis is here, they would have taken him. Uh, Mariota is going to be that bridge quarterback. Maybe they attack quarterback in the second round. Maybe they get they get Desmond Ritter or Sam Howell or whatever. Maybe Carson Strong in round three. Who knows? Uh, but G-Dub, Garrett Wilson, uh, they're going to be without Ridley for a year. <laughs> Uh, I think Wilson is just a, a do-it-all fantastic wide receiver. Uh, so it's great to add him to Kyle Pitts and the receiving core. Nine. Maybe the Seahawks could have gone quarterback here. They certainly would have gone Willis, but it didn't work out. But Sauce Gardner is coming off the board. Cornerback one as of right now before Derek Stingley Jr. Blow, blows up his pro day. Uh, Seattle does need a lot of help everywhere. Everywhere. Kyle Hamilton is falling, man. Ten, Stingley. This one hurts. But I think after his pro day, I think that he will be back in the top ten conversation. Ignore the last two years. Go off of 2019 potential. Uh, so Rob Salah, my guy. Rob Salah uh, gets him uh, an alpha cornerback one. 11, the commanders take Kyle Hamilton. They stop his draft day fall. Uh, now, if Hamilton had gotten to 12, I think that that is an easy no-brainer. But, you know, 12. So the Vikings, they have a lot of options here. So the top two cornerbacks off the board. I love me some McDuffie. Charles Cross is an intriguing name because even though the Vikings are – Set at tackle, I would take Cross and play him at right guard. I would. like he, He's that much of a physical monster. He, he is. Or Jordan Davis is still there. Uh, see you out there. Devontae Wyatt, uh, Olave is there. Drake London is there. Booth, Penning, uh, Carl Aptis, Greek Freak. Yeah, Devin Lloyd. Uh, th- there's a lot of really intriguing names still on the board. That's going to be the problem with the Vikings at 12. But McDuffie, who we've said is a 5'11", Antoine Winfield, uh, a senior. Nailed it. I think that he's going to be a fantastic cornerback in this league. He's really feisty. Uh, probably not as good of a man-to-man guy as a Sauce or a Stingley, but in a hybrid man-zone scheme uh, that Donatel's going to bring over, I think Mendoffy is going to be a fantastic cornerback. Uh, 13, Charles Cross, Texans. So, yeah, they get there still in, in, with a pick from the Browns. Uh, so they get Thibodeau uh, up at three. Now they get Charles Cross here. Eventually he'll, he's going to re- replace Tunsil, so it makes sense. 14, the Ravens, Jordan Davis. This is just messed up, man. Like, how, how do you get Jordan Davis and Michael Pierce on the same team at the same time, man? It's crazy. But, yeah, Jordan Davis, rough and tumble. He just seems like a Raven. Yeah. Uh, 15. So, 
the Eagles, they, they punted one of the first round picks to the Saints. Uh, but the Eagles still have two swipes of this thing in the teens. Devontae White and Andrew Boot Jr. really rebuilding that uh, defense makes sense. 16, the Saints first and two picks. Now, I highly doubt that the Saints stick in pick here. I, I still think that eventually they move up to three uh, and trade with the Texans so they can get, get Malik Willis. Uh, but they get Olave as well as uh, Carl Aftis. Greek freak. So yeah, Cameron Jordan aging out makes a little sense here. Olave, they need some playmakers. Uh, and also, I mean, they're banking on Michael Thomas. Who knows what he's going to be after all these years. But yeah, Olave is an absolute stud. So, ooh, top two uh, Ohio State wide receivers off the board. 17, Penning. Yes. Yes. Even though Penning, he was left tackle at UNI. Move him over to the right side. Him and Slater. Uh, nice bookends long term for Herbert. Uh, Booth we talked about. Carl Aftis, 20. Kenny Pickett, yeah. Uh, Steelers, if Peck, uh, Pickett makes it this far, maybe they have to maneuver up a little bit to go get him. But keeping him in Pittsburgh, uh, they, they're they rectifying their mistake of passing on Dan Marino, the pride of Pitt in 1983. You know, you know. But uh, Pickett stays in the Steel City. Oh, but what can he do in, in the Pittsburgh weather? Well, he's fine up through November in Pittsburgh. Can he do it in December and January in Pittsburgh with the small hand smells like cabbage? Who knows? 21. This sucks. All right, so Devin Lloyd is just like like a like a tailor made Patriot type player. You know, Jamie Collins esque in his size and length, as well as can get after it. I I just really like this pick here. Uh, twenty two Packers versus two picks. John Dotson, wide receiver, three off the board. This really stinks because I love Dotson. I think that he's a fantastic playmaker. I mean, there's a bunch of really good wide receivers in this class, and the and the Packers unfortunately get one. Twenty three Drake London. This is fun. This is fun, man. So uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins nuke is aging out a little bit. And Kyler is the master of the effort. Uh, someone's out there. So Drake London with his size, boxing out ability, uh, just tossing up in the red zone. It's going to be a lot of fun. 24. Yes, the Cowboys need to help rebuild the offensive line. Connor Williams, gone. Alala Collins, gone. Uh, Zion Johnson, he can play some tackle, but he's going to play some guard right here opposite of Zach Martin. 25. Jamison Williams, ooh, Baby, maybe they're already planning for if and when they have to trade digs. But uh, Gabe Davis has really stepped up, and Jamison Williams just gives them a really fun element. Him and Josh Allen, I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, after Williams gets back from that ACL. Uh, 26, Tennessee Titans, Tyler Smith, where, yeah, they could need some help along the offensive line. Tyler Smith is just nasty. He is. Could play some tackle, could play some guard. It's going to be a fantastic uh, time there in Nashville. 27. So the Bucks, uh, similar to the Bills, where they have the luxury of, of being able to redshirt a player. So David Ajabo popped his Achilles at his pro day. Really sucks. I think that he would have been probably a top 15 pick, you know, probably somewhere in there. But now he gets to sit for a full year, let that, that Achilles uh, heal, heal, nailed it. And now he gets to just add, add in more uh, on that Bucks defense. It's fantastic. 28 Packers. This sucks again. This sucks again. Kenny Green, who is he's up there with ZJ in terms of being the best guard in this class, uh, but now he joins the Greasy Grime and Green Bay Packers, who, who definitely need some help along the offensive line. I mean, they got Jenkins, they got Bakhtiari, and they got what? What else? Well, except for that rookie who played decent last year. Uh, 29, Boy Mafe coming in. Back-to-back picks for the Chiefs. Uh, helps on the edge, uh, as well as Christian Watson. Where, Yeah, they, they need a little bit of help uh, replacing uh, Tyreek Hill and his production. And, I mean, he could have gone with some more polished wide receivers. I think Traylon Burks would make uh, sense here. But Christian Watson, you're betting on the athletic upside, so there you go. 31, Linderbaum. Bengals, even though they signed a bunch of dudes in free agency, uh, and uh, Linderbaum can be that center for Burrow long term. Ted Karras, uh, who they signed, uh, can move over to guard. It's all good. And the third two, rounding out the Lions, take the third quarterback in the first round. Matt Corral, Coral, uh, coming out of Ole Miss, showed that that ankle is fine and good to go. He's a dynamic threat, and if they build their offense around him, that's a really intriguing pick. Uh, as they roll with Jared Goof for another year, and then Corral takes over. Uh, but yeah, Vikings at 12, it, it's, it kind of sucks that it, it is what it is, that Sauce and Stingley are off the board. I think that's a distinct possibility. I, I don't think that Sauce makes it out of the top 10. I think Stingley may go after he shows that his uh, Liz Frank injury is fine at, as pro day on Wednesday. But McDuffie, I, I do love me some McDuffie. I understand that you could debate the merits between McDuffie and Booth or uh, McDuffie and other positions available, but the Vikings would get a hell of a player at 12, uh, checking off uh, who could be their best player available, as well as checking the need uh, at cornerback, a little bit of youth infusion there. But 
That's it. Uh, your thoughts on our thoughts. Let us know. Uh, your thoughts on our thoughts on Charles Davis's thoughts. Take a look at his mock draft 1.0. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Must support the work. Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.